Thursday. Hope everyone's doing well and that you had a great week. Just gonna wait until a few people join. We're off the conversation. Hello, Diana. Hi. How are you? Fine, you? Good, good. It's nice to see you. Did you have a good day today? Yeah. And you? Yeah, it was good. Um, it's almost the weekend, so that's exciting. Do you have any plans this weekend? Uh, I maybe go, uh, go shopping with my sister and mom okay so you might go shopping with your with your mom and your sister that's exciting do you have anything in particular that you want to shop for uh, no no <laughs> no it's it's always nice when you go shopping without like any real purpose you just go shopping for fun and you know, you just grab a bite to eat. You just look at sometimes window shopping, a few, you know, clothing stores. I think shopping is one of the most therapeutic activities. So therapeutic uh, activities. One sec, I'm just writing it down. So therapeutic uh, means something that relaxes you and it just makes you, you know, relax and not stressed. I feel like in our lives, we're, we're so nervous. So going shopping just helps a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, it's also like good when you go and you have no idea what you're gonna like buy. And mm -hmm. after you see something uh, like something nice, so you buy this. I know, that's such a great feeling. I know what you mean. You just, you go in without, you know, a specific idea in your head and then as soon as you shop and you find something that you like then you go home and you're so happy yeah. <laughs> I did that the other day I went shopping and I was like you know what I don't have anything in mind I'm just gonna go in I'm gonna go to a few stores and if I find something I find something and I end up I end up finding a sweater a jacket and I was like <laughs> it's really exciting <laughs> so I know what you mean <laughs> do you have a long weekend uh, from school? Uh, yeah, I have uh, four days. So you have four days off. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So you have tomorrow and Monday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so nice. You're going to take the time to just, you know, relax, breathe in, study a little bit maybe if you have some studying. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a lot of studying to do or not so much? Not so much. It's just science and history. Okay, science and history. What are yeah. you learning now in history? Uh, I learned the... Um, uh, I don't remember. Who, uh, Revolution Industrielle. Oh, so the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. That's exciting. Do you enjoy that? Do you prefer science? Yeah, I, I really love uh, history and geography. Oh, right. Do does geography make you want to travel the world? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a specific country you want to visit one day? Uh, Korea. <gasps> beautiful, beautiful. Definitely. And, uh, Korea and maybe Japan. Oh, those are the best countries. One of my friends went uh, a year ago and he said Korea and Japan are amazing 
such a nice experience. The food is amazing. The people are so nice. The architecture, everything about it is so beautiful. I think there's so much history as well. So since you like history and geography, it's going to be a yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's good. It's good to have dreams like that and to want to travel. I think traveling um, exposes us to a lot of experiences and different cultures. And it's always really great to travel. I think we learn a lot. Yeah. And what about science? What are you learning in your science class? Uh, science, uh, we saw the, um, like the sun. The so, sun. so the solar system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the solar system, it's like all about the planets and the sun and whatever orbits. Yes. It's a bit difficult sometimes to remember. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I know in Spanish, but not in French. So I'm like, what is that? <laughs> I know when you have a language that you're very comfortable with and you're familiar with it, and you have to learn a new subject with that language that you're not so comfortable with, it's hard. The, the, the transition is difficult. It's not easy. Yeah. But, you know... The school year is almost over, so <laughs> that's exciting. Um, hello, uh, Pig. Uh, how do, how do you pronounce your name? Sorry. Yes, your name. I'm sorry. What is your name? Uh, I my name is Piggins. Piggins, nice oh, to meet you, Piggins. I nice. think it's your first time joining us. <laughs> nice to meet you too. It's good to have you. How are you? Did you have a good day? Did you have a good day? So, yes, yes, okay, that's awesome. I hope you all, you know, you're ready for the long weekend and that you're excited to just have some time off to, to relax a little bit. Um, today, actually, we are going to go over a few things here and there. So, one of the first things I wanted to do with you is talk about, you know, discuss what would you rather do? Would you rather live in London or live in New York? I'm just going to show my screen one sec. So here, if you had to choose okay. between those two cities, New yeah. York and London, which one would you rather live in? It's a bit of a difficult question, I feel. So would you rather, it's like in French, lequel préfères-tu? So you ha if you had to choose between the red or the blue, you have to make a decision between those two. Which one would you do? <laughs> so I can start, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather, so I personally, I visited New York and I visited London. Both are great and vibrant cities. So vibrant here, what it means, it's very loud, very um, filled with people. Um, it's always alive. When I go, those two cities are very alive. At night, during the day, there's so many people. So that's what vibrant means. So they're both great cities. But if I were to choose one or the other, I would choose personally London. And the reason why I would choose London, it's because I personally have a huge love for Harry Potter. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to go, if I had to choose between London and New York, it's always, it's all, all the way London. And also because British people are, are cool. <laughs> So what about you guys? If you had to choose between one or the other, which one would you like to live in? What did you hear about those cities and why? I think uh, I'm going to choose uh, London mm -hmm. uh, because um, I have a lot of movie that uh, was situated in London, so I'm gonna see if that's really like this. 
Okay, so so you're talk you're saying that there's a few movies that you like that were shot in London, so filmé yeah. in London. Yeah. So what movies? I'm a huge movie fan as well. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a movie uh, that I see when I was uh, like a uh, plus jeune. So a movie that you watched when you were younger. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, Disney. <laughs> yeah, um, Disney. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know the no, uh, the name mm -hmm. in or in, in French, but that's with uh, some uh, dogs, and they have uh, a lot of uh, think. Uh, uh, they are. Uh, white and they have uh, things black i don't remember the name of the dog so a movie um, about dogs and have... Macha. okay so it's a disney movie there's dogs in it and yeah. it's filmed in London. okay let me check that out so movie disney movie about dogs in new in london let's see oh dalmatian yeah yes oh let me show you one second what i have here it's such a great movie it's so cute <laughs> 101 dalmatian Saint un dalmatien i believe in french mm -hmm. it's such a good movie do you like dogs yeah but i think i prefer cats okay do you have any animals? That's why you, you prefer cats? No, but my sister have uh, a cat. So your sister has a cat? Mm -hmm. You feel like you like dogs, but you have more of a preference towards cats because you're more familiar with them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you said that you watched 101 Dalmatian that was filmed in London. Any other movies that you that you remember that was filmed in London as well, or takes place in London? Uh, yeah, I I think I don't. Uh, that's uh, two dogs. Two dogs. They <laughs> they like <laughs> they are uh, in love. So, but uh, oh um, yeah, the they, they, Disney too. The, Is it um, Lady and the Tramp maybe? Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. This yeah, one. yeah. Also in London. I had no idea. Yeah, oh. I think uh, because I see the um uh, l'horloge. Oh, you saw the clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. The clock in the I think oh, that like the Big Ben, the Big Ben. Oh, uh, yeah. Mhm. Mm this one. This is what it's called, Big Ben. This one here. So that's oh you have a really good eye for that i never noticed i watched this movie so many times and i never knew that it was actually taking place in london so you have an eye for detail um there's also if you guys are interested in movies that take place in england there's also one called paddington what? So, this one it's that movie it's called paddington and this movie, it's about a, um, a bear that lives in Peru. And one day he goes to London. And the story is about him discovering London, living with his family, and trying to kind of connect with people. Obviously, it's, you know, it's like um, a comedy movie because it doesn't really make sense that a, like a, a bear lives with humans. But... It's like a, a fantastic story, uh, a bit unreal, but it's beautiful. The message is amazing. So if you guys are, if you guys want to watch a nice movie that is heartwarming and and funny, you should watch that movie. I don't really remember, but I saw. Yeah, because I know. Yeah, I know uh, that uh, bear. Yeah, that bear. It's a there's two movies. So I, I think every time I watch it, it makes me want to go to London and go explore again. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so perfect. So we have Diana that said that she would rather live in London. What about you, Pina? Would you rather live in New York or live in London? Hello? Take it. Okay, I think we may have lost begins. Okay, so now I have something that I have been thinking about lately, and it's about spring. So you know how spring started last week? So I was always thinking, okay, here in Canada, we don't really have a huge celebration of spring. What we usually do, it's that, you know, we just change the time zone here. Uh, the time, sorry, one hour we move the clock by one hour and that's it. We don't do much. We sometimes see the trees and the weather change, but in some countries they actually do celebrate it. So I wanted to, I wanted to show you guys an article that I found about how um, they celebrate spring in other countries. So um, this is what the article is. Um, it's this one. So nine ways spring is celebrated around the world. So I have here the um, the article. I will just share it with you. And we can read about a few countries and see what their traditions are, how they celebrate it, and what are their, their, ma their major traditions. So one of the first countries that we can read about is Poland. So does anyone want to read? Here we go. Um, um, start? Yes, you can start, Diana. Okay. Uh, po Poland. Nothing say, says spring like to throwing? Throwing. Throwing a uh, doll in water. Wait, what? It It is a special doll usually made of straw and dresses in Co colorful clothes so yeah this is dressed dressed means uh, that she is wearing so the doll is wearing uh, clothes that are colorful you, you can continue you uh, you will <laughs> i yeah. don't remember what yeah you can continue. you'll uh you'll mm -hmm. see polish families and friends so, toting her dolls as they march down to a boat or river. I continue? Yes, continue. Okay. This doll uh, represents winter's, winter time. So, to send winter on this way, and come spring, these doll, dolls are soon in water. Yes. So, and then the so, last one. I read? Yes, the last one. Okay. Sometimes they, they're even set on fire by adult, adults before had. They really want to make sure winter stay away for other year. For another year, yeah. So what did you understand from this short paragraph? What What is the tradition in Poland? What do they do to celebrate spring? What is song? Um, which, sorry, which paragraph? Yeah, uh, the, I think the dolls are sunk in water. Ah, so sunk, it means that, you know, when you, let's say, put a, I don't know, let's say a potato and you throw it in your pool or in your sink, 
it will sink into the bottom of the pool or the or the sink that you have. It means ça va, it's going to, it, it won't float. It will mm -hmm. go into the depth of the, in this case, in the lake or in the river. So in that case, what they mean by that is that the doll will disappear. It will vanish into, you know, the river or the pond. So this is, if I were to show you what sinking means, it's like this. Sinking. So this is what it means. Sinking, it's when you have, let's say, a, a ship or a boat or like, let's say, remember the Titanic, the Titanic sank or sunk into the ocean uh, because that means that it was just going into the depth of, of the ocean. It means it was disappearing um, into the water. It just sank. Okay. Okay. They, okay. So if I understand, they take a doll and they put fi fire in uh, to doll in the water? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So exactly, like you said, so basically what they do, it's that they take a doll and they make sure that the doll is dressed in col colorful clothes. So it can be in red and blue and green. And then the families and their friends, the Polish people will march down into like near a river or a lake. And then they will throw the doll into the water, into the river. And the reason why they do this, it's because they tell themselves the doll represents winter. And we want winter to disappear for another year. So they want the doll to sink into the water so that we welcome spring. That's so interesting, right? What a nice tradition. I think I might start doing that every year now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Now we have a second country. Our second country is Mexico. So, um... Begins, would you like to read? Would you like to read, Begins? Okay. okay. Great, thank you. Mm. Man, Mexico, Mexican, towards French festival to celebrity day, Ned Sanson, and Children's parade are you popular? Seen for children, kids dressed up as foreign and animals, yes. but on off day, big dress, French celebra cele celebration, celebration, yeah. celebration, tax price. Eight and ancient sit sight, yeah, sight nine as it's called Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. yeah, <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> difficult to say, <laughs> yeah, yes, I understand. It, To rise a large city, I difficult. Built. 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 Uh, Popular. Pop, 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 called the my the city factory. A. Hey. Yeah, a huge monument. A huge monument made in the shape of in the end no, of a pyramid. These no eyes, L Castillo Castillo a day Castel. Yes. 
on days spring a kira to sand of properly so thousands of people mm -hmm. people okay yeah i see people mm -hmm. get I'll send three strict eyes they sin sets sets the sun sets it means le coucher du soleil so when the sun is ah, oui. setting in the evening yeah yeah set to celebrate they want the written of the sun serpent as they scenery yeah the sunlight then light fast what's the what's the uh feeds feed feeds yeah so fades it means as it disappears so as the sunlight, uh, uh, la lumière disparaît, so fades, c'est graduellement. Gradually, the sunlight is disappearing. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, cre create. So the shadows. The shadows, c'est l'ombre. Okay, l'ombre. Mm -hmm. The appearance of is Nike. Difficile. Yeah, this one is difficult. Slithering. It's this one's difficult. I'm sorry. Flithering. Draw day. Day. The stairway of the pyramid. The stairway of the pyramid. So what they're saying here is that the snake, there's a shadow, there's an yeah, une ombre that mm -hmm. keeps that of the of the serpent that keeps going down the stairs here that is that is what the tradition says in mexico so a lot of things happen in mexico right they have they gather around near the um uh at the chichen itza which is the pyramid this is what chichen itza is it's mm -hmm. uh where there's a pyramid where the mayans um created this and they built it and there's a lot of like traditions that they do that they wait until the sun sets to see the shadow of the the snake going down to celebrate the coming of of spring so that's mm -hmm. one of the things that they do um i've been to chichen itza before and it's so beautiful there's so much history there's um it's it's very beautiful it's considered considered as beautiful sometimes as the egyptian pyramids okay um so speaking of Egyptian pyramids. There's also in Egypt. Yeah. So in, oops, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so in Egypt, if I were to read you what happens, what happens in Egypt uh, during the springtime to celebrate spring, in North America, here we celebrate Mother's Day in May, right? So the second Sunday in May, we celebrate Mother's Day. But in Egypt, the day, as soon as it hits spring, they celebrate Mother's Day. So in Canada, in North America, we celebrate Mother's Day, second yeah. week of May. In Egypt, they celebrate it on, the, on spring day. So here it says that the tradition began in 1956, okay. when an Egyptian man suggested that moms be honored on the first day of spring. Yeah. Since spring is the beginning of a new life in nature. So yeah. he thought it would be a great time to celebrate all moms. So the tradition caught on uh, and spread throughout the region. So today, other countries such as Iraq, Libya, Oman, and Syria also celebrate Mother's Day on spring. Mm -hmm. Isn't this beautiful? It's so nice. <laughs> it's very beautiful that they decided to do this on you know, the first day of spring, because it's true. Spring, when we think about it, it's um, a time of the year where change is happening. You know, life is beginning. 
you know, during the winter, we tend to be a bit more, you know, sad, depressed, a bit tired because of the weather, because it's dark really early. But spring, it's kind of like the beginning of something fresh, something new. So the fact that they wanted to associate that with Mother's Day and say that, you know, because moms are always giving life to their children and they're, they're a positive aspect in, in one's life, let's celebrate it the same day. I think it's so nice. Do you guys agree? Yeah, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, it's so cute. Um, okay, and then we have maybe one more. Let's maybe check out Japan, since Diana wants to go to Japan one day. Would you like to read, Diana? Yeah, Japan. The spring equinox is a national holiday in Japan. It's called Shunbun no Hai. It's a day to yeah. It's a day to appreciate appreciate nature and uh, all live living creatures and important Japanese tradition uh, tradition on the Echino equinox include visit uh, visiting the graves of ancestor families spend the day cleaning the graves yeah the graves the graves it's um, gravestone. You know, when you go to the cemetery, there is uh, the tombstone where the person's name is written on. So, you know, for example, if I were to say um, Emma Lafontaine, let's say Emma Lafontaine, born on June 12, 1960, and passed away on December 20th, 19, uh, 2003, for example. This is what the, the gravestone is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And leaving fresh spring flowers on the at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. It's also time when Japan Japan's national flower, the cherry blow blows. Yeah, the cherry blossom. I'll show you a picture after what it looks like. Okay. Start to bloom large crowd hair uh outdoors to get a uh, uh, a glimpse it means a glimpse. A bench, it's to just watch it for a second just to even look at it for one second glimpse of their so stunning flowers yeah so stunning it means something that is beautiful so stunning you can say a person is stunning wow this person is beautiful. You can also say this person is stunning. Let's say um, you also have um, an, a dog or a cat and they're very cute. You can say, oh, they're stunning. It means they're they're adorable. They're very beautiful okay. as well. Okay. Uh, the we weather station even give regular blood updates to help people plan her visit. Amazing. So the uh, cherry blossom tree is actually so beautiful. So let me show you what it looks like. So it's this. So what they're saying is that in springtime, this is when they start, they start to open up. The flowers are initially, they're probably like this, you know, a bit closed off. They're still, you know, not ready to open up. And during springtime, the day of, of spring, this is when they start to open up slowly. So this is what the cherry blossom is. Oh, um, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful, right? It's yeah. amazing. And I think it's it brings so much joy. And it's like they said, it's stunning. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Do you guys have a favorite flower or favorite tree? Uh, but uh, that's uh, the like in Sakura? Or oh. hmm. uh, can you? Uh, show a picture of sakura please yeah of course one second so uh, let me check cherry blossom versus sakura i feel like um, 
This one pulling. Sakura tree. Oh, I feel like it's very similar. It's like you, yeah, you see here. Let me check. I want to actually know. So I know Wikipedia is not always reliable, but we just need basic information. So you see here, it says the cherry blossom or Sakura. So you're, you're oh. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I'm saying with uh, with my friends, oh, I like the sakura and the, the sherry, and yeah, I I don't I don't know that's the same thing. Yeah, I think that's too. different. Yeah, me too. When you said, oh, I I thought it, it looks like sakura. I was like, I wasn't even sure that sakura was that. I remember hearing something yeah. about a sakura tree but i wasn't really sure it was this one it's so beautiful right yeah but i think uh, i je pensais that I uh, sakura was from uh korea and uh, uh, uh cherry was from uh, japan wait me um i can actually check that let me see so um sakura tree um Korea, maybe? Yeah. I mean, um, is there a plan? It says that it's more common in Japan. So, okay. while Japan, well, Japan is famous for its cherry. So, I think it's originally more famous in Japan, but I think there's also sakura trees in Korea. So yeah, both both countries have them. It's so beautiful. I think I think that's so worth it to maybe you know when you said that you want to go visit um Japan or Korea, maybe going during the spring would be amazing. Right? Yeah. Just go and experience that and see the trees and see how the sakura or the cherry blossom looks like. It would be such a wonderful experience. Okay. Um yeah. So, now that we, we only have a few more minutes left, I want to play a game with you. It's called um, Family Feud. So, Family Feud is basically, they're going to give us um, a word, like um, a riddle, and we have to find as many words as possible related to that sentence. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do that. I'll help you guys, don't worry. I'm not gonna leave you hanging. <laughs> okay. We're playing against you. Okay, so you have to name something of yours that is in terrible condition. So terrible condition, it means something that you know, is almost ruined. Like I can give you an example, my shoes. I can have really old shoes. Those could be in very terrible condition. What else? What, what else can we have that can be in very terrible condition? Any idea? Maybe socks? Maybe someone's couch? Phone? Furniture, yeah. What else? Uh, my phone. Your phone? Yeah, let's see that. <laughs> oh, no. But it's a good one. I would agree with you. Hmm. Okay. What else? Your house? <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, okay, time's up. There's body, health, car. Hmm. That's it's okay. We got 49 points. It's okay. Let's let's do better. You can just say whatever you think and I'll write it down. Next round is you have to name something people eat every day, and that probably means you're sleeping. Wait, what? Sweets. Chips. Fruits. Fruits. Yeah. Fruits. 
<laughs> don't know if it's. Okay, this one is a weird question. Carry on. This is a bit of a strange question. Let me get another one. Okay, this is... Who eats all that at night? It's a heavy meal at night. <laughs> this one is easier. Okay. What can you hold? You can hold the... What is cold? You can hold something. What can you hold? You can hold the phone, for example. What else? Uh, what holds mean? So you can you can hold you can hold the hands. Yeah. Yeah. What else? I can hold the jacket. Yeah. Let's see that. No. Nope. What else? Grocery bags. No. I wonder what's the answer. The elevator. How can you hold the? Okay. <laughs> this was very special. Usually this game is more fun than that. But it's okay. <laughs> okay, maybe let's try to play one more time and then I'll let you guys go. Um, okay, let's try again. CIPs are always prepared for more. They've learned more. They've experienced more. I think advertising sometimes is very annoying. <laughs> Okay. Let's see. This time they're asking to name something that people get removed from their body. Shoes. It's mostly like from your body, like here. Like for example, you can remove hair. Um what else can you remove? You were know here? The what, sorry? Uh, your uh, sourcil? Eyebrows? Okay, let's see eyebrows. Eyebrows. Oh, uh, there's also, um, I don't know if you guys know moles. So, les grains de beauté. Moles because they're not, they're, they don't want, they don't like them. Uh, what else? The tonsils, les amygdales. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we can remove tonsils, we can remove teeth, we can remove tattoos. Sometimes people have tattoos, and after a few years, they don't like them, so they have them removed. Oh, we can uh, we can remove tattoos? Yes. So there's something now that's been happening. Um, it's um, you can have a tattoo removal. So you go to um, uh, like a dermatologist or a specialist, and you tell them, oh, "I would like to remove my tattoo." 
And over the course of a few weeks or a few months, they can remove it. But it's a really long process. It's not just like that. It doesn't take like one time. So you need to go regularly. But um, that happens when some people get tattoos and after a few years, they're not really happy with it. And they kind of regret it. So um, tattoo removals is something. Oh, okay. And so we have tonsils, tattoos, teeth, moles. Moles are grains de beauté. So sometimes okay. people have grains de beauté like on their body. And sometimes when they go to the dermatologist, they tell them, look, this is not, it doesn't look really good. Uh, we have to remove it because it can turn into something bad, like something like cancer or something. So some people have it removed. Some people, they have like moles, but they keep them because they're okay. Next round. You have to name an animal that's easier to get off than on. So yeah. off of, so for example, it's easier to get off of a horse rather than going on the horse, a horse, for example. Okay. What else? What animal can we cow? Go? A cow, let's see. Yeah. yeah. What else? What else? What else? Um, a cow. Yeah, uh, so a cow is the the female of the bull. So the, they wrote it here in the... Oh, okay. Um, yeah. What else? An elephant, maybe? An elephant. Um, what about a dolphin? Ever um, ridden on a camel before? A camel is actually really hard to um, get on because you need a really big push from someone who can help you. Okay. Here, the question is: You have to name something that might, that might get rained out. Hmm. What might get rained out? What rained out means? Rained out, it's mostly like, you know, um, something that gets cancelled, for example. So, for example, what might get cancelled? A date? Is, oh, sorry, can you repeat? Uh, a date? A date? A date. Ah, a date? Yeah. I, I agree with you. I don't know why they said no. Um. Hmm. Maybe a, a soccer game? Yeah. Un voyage. Trip. Wow. <laughs> okay. I'll go on to parade. Not bad. The team we won. We won! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Good job, babe. Oh, it's fun. Um, well, thank you all for joining. This was really great. Uh, I hope you have a great long weekend and that you um, you get some rest and that you um, that I'll probably see you in a few weeks. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye. Bye.